A lot of times with a vehicle, you need to choose between practicality, efficiency, and performance. Do you need to with the Alfa Romeo Tonale? Maybe not. Let's check it out. Buyers aren't gravitating to sports cars the way they used to. Good thing automakers are delivering SUV crossovers with enough performance chops to entertain enthusiasts. Alfa Romeo proves it can be all things to all people with its Stelvio. Now there's Tonale, its smaller sibling. Casting a wide net, Tonale is slightly larger than the BMW X1, Mercedes GLA, and Volvo XC40, more compact than Audi Q5, Cadillac XT4, or Porsche Macan. It's named after Tonale Pass near the Swiss-Italian border. Tonale is strictly an all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid with an all-electric range of 33 miles, according to the EPA. Pricing starts at $44,000 for a base Sprint model. This is a well-equipped Veloce model, and as tested, it goes for fifty-seven dollars Now, if all you want is the design, because this is a good-looking vehicle, maybe shop at your Dodge dealership because the Hornet is virtually a twin of this, and it starts at $33,000. Now that's with a 2.0-liter turbocharged gas-only powertrain, the hybrid is optional with Dodge. Both are built outside of Naples, Italy. The bird's eye camera view is part of an active assist option package at $1,850. $2,500 bundles solid Harman Kardon sound with heated and vented leather chairs. The standard seats are grippy Alcantara. Bolstering is appropriate for a sporty sport ute. Uh, they're fairly firm. Rounding off the extra kit is a mid-sized sunroof at $1,200. Tonali's ground clearance is 5.6 inches, max towing is 2,000 pounds. It's less about roaming the great outdoors, more about the club scene. Now there's always Subaru Outback for you, Ranger Rick. Moving the Tonale is a 1.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that makes 180 horsepower on its own. A 121-horse electric motor with 184 pound-feet of torque drives the back axle. A 15.5 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery is tucked in the center of the floor for weight distribution. It charges in two and a half hours using 240-volt level two. It cannot be DC fast-charged. This gas electric one-two punch delivers a total of 285 horsepower and 347 pound-feet of torque. Occasionally, the engine kicks on, but not often. Alpha's first hybrid comes with a six-speed geared transmission. Manual control is courtesy of these lovely but enormous aluminum paddles that block access to the stocks. If a Tonale fails to signal, these are one reason why. DNA drive modes? A is for advanced efficiency or maximum electric range. N is for natural and everyday setting that switches between gas and electric automatically. D or dual power dynamic is for optimal scoot, maxing out both the motor and engine. It also dials up damper firmness and recuperation drag. E-Save can hold the battery level or even charge it, though it's more efficient to use an outlet. Extra gauges to call up as well. Run Tonale in all-electric mode, and it's not going to be as quick when the light turns green because you're using only part of the powertrain, right? This is perfectly acceptable for city driving because, you know, electric motors, lots of low-end torque. It feels faster than it is, even though the 0 to 60 dash takes 11 to 12 seconds. Now, if you're using both gas and electric together, it's significantly faster, just under 6 seconds. Even if you're in pure EV mode, the gas engine will kick on if you mash the throttle because you've asked for more power. It's really easy to tell. At the bottom of the pedal travel, there's a click, and if you push through that, that turns the gas engine on. If there's any turbo lag, the torquey electric motor covers for it. All-wheel drive is helpful in the sloppy stuff, but I've said it before, I'll say it again. 
drive to conditions. Acceleration brings life to the party. Strong binders are the best wingman. Alpha claims the brake by wire system significantly reduces response time. I can tell you the brakes really do haul this thing down quickly. This being a hybrid, the transition from regenerative braking to the actual physical brakes is pretty smooth, but when you're really stopping hard mid-travel, it does get a little bit grabby. As far as sound goes, Tenale is moderately quiet. So one thing, when you put your foot hard into the throttle, you will hear the engine, um, and it's not overly sporty. I mean, this is a plug-in hybrid. Tenale's seating position is elevated a bit, nothing that'll give people a nosebleed. This is a sporty SUV after all, and an Alfa Romeo. A lower center of gravity is important. Tenale is great fun to chuck into a corner hard. Body movements are very nicely controlled. The steering weight is excellent, a little on the heavy side, but not overly so. On center feel is locked down. That said, the Porsche Macan remains the gold standard for me. Um, that is just a brilliant machine. Putting a fine point on it, Tenale slings through tight turns with gusto, but doesn't offer up the same analog joy found from behind the wheel of Big Brother Stelvio. The feeling is more digital. Weight might be a factor. At 4,230 pounds, this is a bit of a chunk. The EPA rates the all-electric range at 33 miles, right? Well, with temperatures in the mid-50s, I'm pretty much nailing that. And once the battery is spent, it's supposed to get 29 miles per gallon. I'm seeing that too. The center screen clearly spells out what's happening with the powertrain, and it's up in the line of sight. Nice. Standard ADAS Active Electronic Safety Tech includes automatic emergency braking, blind spot detection, lane keep assist, and adaptive cruise control. Remember, this has a geared gearbox, and the six-speed has nice crisp shifts, and when you mash the throttle, it downshifts really quickly. Excellent. And you can't miss those giant Dumbo ear steering wheel paddles. Tenale's tailored cockpit wraps around the driver. Like so many vehicles these days, the digital gauge cluster changes in a number of different ways. Techy, and yet the graphics get a throwback vibe. Same goes for the double bump hood. No shiny piano black plastic in here. Most of the materials and trim have attractive patterns. They also have a solid look and feel, as long as you don't look down low. The ignition button here is kind of cool, but unlike Hornets, which is mounted on the dash, the position changes depending on where you last left the wheel. In my week with Tenale, I kept pushing the DNA dial to start it up. Owners will figure this out. And nearly every passenger commented on the unique turn signal sound. A Qi charge pad is standard. There's no guessing if it's juicing up either. The usual storage cubbies are here. Most are decent sized. The user interface that's found in many Stellantis products is well organized with good response. I see the screen as right sized. Not too small, not distractingly large. Goldilocks, are you listening? Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. Tanal is not a large vehicle, so when it comes to the back seats, manage expectations. I'm five foot nine and I have enough headroom, that's not a problem. Knee and legroom are good and my Nikes slide all the way underneath the seats, so footroom is fine. The door openings are a little bit on the small side, so my size 11s can be a little cramped getting in and out. You got your door pockets, those are a little bit small. No separate climate zone back here, but there are adjustable vents and power to charge your phone. Oftentimes, automakers chintz out and don't put a pocket here. Thank you, Alpha. There's a small spine down the middle. That's not too bad. The cushions themselves, those are on the flat side, not tons of support. The seats don't slide fore and aft to max out leg or cargo room. Tenale is a classic case of belts for three, but if you're hauling adults back here, 
keep it to two. Dipped in Masano blue metallic paint, a $660 upcharge, Tenale cuts an attractive profile. It looks nearly identical to the concept first shown at the Geneva Auto Show. Uh, back then, I called it the tonal. I gotta own my gaffes. The pool ball rack front fascia is unique, and tail lamps get a different pattern than Hornet, but the connection is very clear, which might elevate Dodge, but not Alpha. Again, love the four piston Brembo brakes, but the rear calipers don't exactly authenticate the Italian's image. The teledial wheels might push buyers towards the Alpha, though, a chef's kiss at every corner. One distinction between the siblings, to get the same output from the American as the Italian, Dodge has a power shot feature that provides full boost for 15 seconds. How appropriate. Oh, and at night, this panel glows. Nice ambiance. Considering the competition that I've mentioned, you probably guessed that this is not the size of a Suburban, and that is going to affect the cargo. The hybrid's battery doesn't take up space back here, but still, there's no spare tire. This is the travel charge cord if you want to mooch electricity from your friends and family. Handy touches include power, bag hooks, and a ski pass-through. Reaching in to drop the seats is fairly easy. The result is maximum cargo room of just over 50 cubic feet. Not too shabby. There's some rise to the floor, though. It's not perfectly flat. If you're stocking up on TP or loading carry-on suitcases, they're about the same size, Tenale takes on five of them. At 23 cubic feet, it's about average in class. Time for red light, green light. Green light. Tenale's plug-in hybrid powertrain delivers on its promised efficiency. It looks good doing it too, especially the classic Alpha grill and wheels. In D mode, there's solid acceleration. And pushing this hard, the six-speed transmission doesn't have the compromised feel of a hybrid. Yellow lights? Tenale is engaging in the twisties, just not at the same emotional Italian level as Stelvio. This is efficient, but remember kids, only if it's plugged in on a regular basis. I like the seats, some might find there's too much starch in them. Red light. Seeing your sporty Italian crossover for sale at the Dodge dealership across the street is a marketing miss. Either the paddles are too big or the stock controls are too short. Take your pick. I vote for more snarl from the exhaust when the Turbo 4 is pushed hard. Plug-in hybrids can be the best of all worlds for some owners. The main argument against them is two powertrains to maintain. JD Power recently found that PHEVs have fewer issues than pure EVs after three years, but more than standard hybrids. Everyone has their opinion. Buy the vehicle that works best for your needs. Tenale is loads of fun to drive. It's practical, it looks great, and can be very efficient if you plug it in. It's also a lot less expensive than a Porsche Macan. But I would also like to drive the Dodge Hornet with the two liter turbo engine because it's much less expensive. And if owners can't plug this in on a regular basis, it loses the efficiency appeal. But the plug-in hybrid powertrain has loads of potential and it's wrapped in a spicy package. The Tonale is the most affordable way to SUV with Italian style. One issue with Tonale is finding a place to buy one. For example, BMW has three times the dealerships in the U.S. At one time, Alpha execs said this would be the Italian Audi. Some of you have God as your co-pilot. Some of you have Dog as your co-pilot. I have Martin Campbell as my co-pilot. He drives while I shoot running footage. So everybody, please say thank you to Martin. <laughs> One last thing about plugins and reliability, and I'll admit this is anecdotal. I own two GMPFs. I've had one issue with the Volt three years in. That was covered under warranty. And an HVAC blower went bad on my ELR after six years. So I've not had any big issues and the batteries are perfectly fine. I don't typically dive into reliability. It's very complicated. 
But I will say, J.D. Power says Alfa Romeo scores towards the bottom. So there's that. Before I go, I always love to leave you guys with an extra bit of information. This time, it's the Alfa Romeo logo. What does it mean? Well, um, Alfa is an acronym. The red and white is the flag of Milan, and the serpent is actually a grass snake, a pretty darn big one because it's swallowing a person. Yeah, it's a little conceptual. They've kind of cleaned it up over the years, so it's not so gory. And this being electrified, if you look at the back window, the serpent has a plug. Nice little Easter egg there. Um, you're still here at the end? Wow, I suggest subscribing to this channel and clicking notifications. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments or find me on social media. I'll try to get to you. And if you found this review helpful or informative or even mildly entertaining, please support my channel. Um, you know, YouTube pay absolutely sucks. Um, I live in Seattle, a beautiful city. Uh, certainly not perfect, no big city is. Um, it's also very expensive. I also have a wedding coming up. My daughter's getting married, so every little bit helps. Still need gas for this thing. So you can use YouTube Super Thanks or Venmo. Thanks again for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.